Dear sewing friends, today we're making, that's right, a bucket hat and not one, but two. And bucket hats slowly but surely have been making their way back into the everyday fashion of us people. The convenience element is definitely there and that's the reason I made one for myself to protect my head from sun. And then my dear friend Claire from Penguin and Pear also made one with slightly different features and you might like it as well. So I will leave her video at the very end of this video so definitely stay tuned check out her channel check out her videos you will find plenty of amazing stuff so let's get started with drafting and sewing your own awesome bucket hat now here's the cool part bucket hats can be really different it's all just a matter of your taste and preference and since the pattern is really easy to make you'll be able to adjust yours however you desire now to draft your own bucket hat, you will need just one very simple measurement and that is the circumference of your head. Take your measuring tape, place it like so, and take the measurement. And that's it, so let's get drafting. Now this is the order in which we're going to draft the pattern pieces for our bucket hat. And here's a quick little tip. You just took the measurement of your head, but if you know that your hair has really big volume, especially after you wash it, like for example in my case, then I would add maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch extra to this measurement to account for that gorgeous hair of yours. Next, we're going to use just half of the head measurement that you just took. So for me, that's going to be 11 and a half inches, and that's what you see on your screen right now. Then, this is just an approximate measure. You can take anywhere from three and a half to four and a half inches, maybe even more depending on the size of your head and your preference. But I am taking four inches, and that will be the height of the side of my bucket hat. Now go ahead and complete the rectangle. Now here's the thing, we have to curve it in. So all of the little dots that I'm going to be making right now are going to be 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm taking 5 eighths of an inch from the left, 5 eighths of an inch from the right, 5 eighths of an inch from the middle down, and 5 eighths of an inch from the middle down again on the bottom of this rectangle. For the next step, we're going to create the new sides of our bucket hat. And here you see that happen in the blue marker. Now, with a dash curved line, we're going to do the dip on top and the dip on the bottom. The only thing to keep in mind is that these little corners have to be at almost 90 degrees. So just a straight right angle. Just keep that in mind, but other than that, it's all really easy. Once done, go ahead and mark it that you will need to cut two of these pattern pieces for your bucket hat. And let's move on to the next thing. Now, go ahead and take your measuring tape, place it on the edge like so, and measure the length of the bottom curve. Now, that is going to be the width of the next rectangle that we're going to build. The height of that rectangle is going to be three inches. Again, an approximate measure, and you can play around with it if you'd like. Once you have that new rectangle built, go ahead and divide it in six equal parts. And here's a little tip. If you would like the brim of your bucket hat to be more spread out, then divide it in more parts than six. Now go ahead and cut out this piece and slice through these lines almost all the way through, but not past it. So that way the pieces are still attached together. And this is what we're going to do next. Then place underneath your pattern piece a new piece of paper and now we are going to mark these pattern pieces but we're going to spread them 3 eighths of an inch apart and you can see me do that on the screen right now. Here's a quick little tip. If it is easier for you, you can use little pieces of scotch tape to hold it in place as you outline it. That way you don't have to worry about it not matching. Once done, I also added 3 eighths of an inch on each side on the bottom of my brim and then I cut it out. 
To make sure that our bucket head comes together perfectly, we need to take a look and make sure that the top part of the brim matches in length the bottom part of the side of the bucket hat. And turns out that mine was a little bit shorter. So here you see me adjust it, and now we're ready to cut out this pattern piece. So now we have the side of the hat, we have the brim of the hat, and the last thing that we need to do is the actual top of the hat, which is going to be the circle and therefore makes it really easy to draft. Now grab your measuring tape and measure the top curve of the side of the hat. Now once you have that measurement, go ahead and divide it by pi or 3.14. Now you have the radius of the circle that is going to make the top of your hat. So so now we're going to make that circle. You see me draw one radius first and then another one and then the radius all around of a semicircle because I'm going to cut mine on the fold. And now you have all pattern pieces completed. Now for the fabric, I'm using cotton linen blood that I actually also used to create my circle skirt. And I do have a tutorial for it from a few weeks back. And I will leave that link for you in the info box below. Very easy as well, perfect for summer. But two layers of this and an interfacing will be plenty to create a sturdy enough bucket hat. So if I were you, I wouldn't really worry about the thickness of your fabric as long as it's not too lightweight. And then you'll be all set. Of course, you have to take in consideration the actual use of the garment or the accessory that you're making. So it's going to have a lot of wear and tear, it's gonna have a lot of washing, and it's going to be exposed to the sun very frequently. So if I were you, I would stick to cotton, cotton blends, linen, linen blends, and that's what I did in my bucket hat. When you cut, don't forget to add your seam allowances. Half an inch will be a good amount to add for this particular project. Now I've cut this circle on the fold so that way I get the full circle when you open it up. I've also cut the side on the fold as well so that way it's just one pattern piece. And then I cut two separate pieces for the brim of the hat. Once that is done, you will need to make sure that you have one set for the outer hat, one set for the lining, and one set of the interfacing. Next step for us is to attach interfacing to the actual fabric and that is going to form the outside of the hat. I usually cut my interfacing slightly bigger than the actual pieces to account for any movement during fusing. And if you do the same as I do, make sure that you don't put your iron on top of the interfacing as the glue will melt onto your iron. And then once done, you will need to trim the edges to match the actual size of the fabric. Now let's sew everything together. Grab the middle piece, place it right sides together, pin it, and then stitch it. We will use a straight stitch throughout the whole project. Go ahead and backstitch, do it a straight stitch, and backstitch again. When you're sewing this, make sure that you repeat exactly the same steps for both, for the outer shell of your bucket hat, the one that we fused with the interfacing, and for the lining. Once done, make sure that your seam allowances are pressed open like so. For this next step, we're gonna take the circle and we're going to attach it to the top of this side of the bucket hat. And the way I do it to make it easier and more even is I find the halfway, 
then I fold it in half and then I find quarter ways. And then I take the circle and I fold it four times and I mark those quarter ways as well. So that way, now each of these pins on the circle is going to match with each of the pins on my side of the bucket hat. Now when you sew this with a straight stitch, it will bubble up a little bit and it always happens like this when you're sewing a circle or a shape onto something else. However, here's a little tip. Make sure that you place your circle directly underneath your presser foot. That way you can see what you're doing and you make sure that you don't end up with any pinches and folds. Also, take your time, don't rush, and you'll have a really nice and even result. If it helps, you can baste it in first and then sew the actual circle in. Now when you're going to repeating this for the lining of your bucket hat, make sure that you leave a small opening about two to three inches so that way we have the means to turn the bucket hat right side out when it's time to do so. Now we will sew the brim of the hat. Place the pieces right sides together and stitch with a straight stitch with the seam allowance that you have. And once done, go ahead and press the seams open like so on both pieces with interfacing and for the lining. For the next step, we're going to attach the brim of the hat to the rest of the hat. And here you're going to use exactly the same principles as we did in attaching the circle to the side of the hat. So you're going to mark quarter ways on both on the side of the hat and the brim of the hat. Then you're going to match those markings, pin them in place and sew them with a straight stitch, repeating the same thing for the part of the hat with the lining and the part of the hat with interfacing. After that, I'm going to notch the hat with the interfacing like so, so that way when we turn it right side out, it has a better shape. All right, we're almost on the finishing line. For the next step, you're going to take the lining of the hat and place it inside of the hat with the interfacing, right sides together, matching at the side seams. You're going to line up the long edges of the brim, pin them in place, and then you're going to use the same straight stitch and sew all the way around. You're gonna sew it shut. Once done, it's going to look like so. And here I choose to trim the seam allowances a little bit and then turn it right side out to that little opening that we left open previously. Hey. 
make sure that you use your fingers and a rolling motion so that way you can really turn the brim of the hat. All right, last two finishing steps. First, you're gonna do top stitching on the very edge of the brim of the hat, like so, just a straight stitch on the very edge. And then, if you would like to, you can do this very characteristic to the bucket hat, stitching on the brim. And the easiest way to do that, and to do that neatly, is to align the edge of your presser foot with the edge of the previous stitch, like so. So that way, every single time you're stitching, you're stitching on the equal distance and it really comes out nice and neat like that. And of course, take your time, make sure that you really make it nice and neat. And once that is done, you just need to press your hat. If you're really having a hard time pressing out the actual body of the hat, take a towel, roll it up, put it inside of the hat, and then press it so that way you have some shape inside of it. And then use your hand sewing needle to, or sewing machine if you'd like to, and finish up that little opening that we used for turning the hat right side out. Well, my bucket hat is done, but definitely check out Claire's hat on the video right over here. So definitely click right over here to go to Claire's channel. I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it. Thank you so much. And until next time, happy sewing, happy watching, and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.